Good afternoon, Network Nation. Ron G, a.k.a. your console here to kind of pick up the pieces where we left off with the three elephants. It was no way in the world I was going to leave that one hanging. And the reason is, is because there's a couple of uh, uh, moving parts that really need to be addressed. And sometimes, um, let's face it, uh, a smidget, uh, a couple of minutes of talking uh, doesn't always get it done. While the baseline of understanding is there, we always want to make sure that we don't leave anything left behind. No man, no woman left behind. So Without further ado, um, there is a question here on the table um, based on what we learned about the three elephants. The question is, do we actually take our money seriously? Do we take our money seriously? Do we take our retirement seriously? These are questions that we have to address. Um, we're not going to sit here and act like um, we don't get it and we don't understand what's going on because we absolutely do. I think... Um, what I've recognized is that I have to take responsibility um, to the uh, success and the failures uh, of a lot of you guys that are on my channel, because at the end of the day, when you win, I win. And when you lose, I lose. So I have to really look at things um, first, starting with myself and look myself in the mirror and say, hey, do you get this? Do you understand this? Are you utilizing these these technologies? And um, of course, that took me a few years <laughs> to get where I am. So forgive me uh, if there's been some tongue lashing going on. It's nothing personal. It's all love. But the reality of it is, is like myself and like so many of my peers and uh, a lot of us out there, sometimes it just takes us a little longer to get moving like we should. So hopefully... The information that's been provided, like I said, do your homework, do your own research. My job is to get you the information and, and you guys process it and do what you do best, right? Um, look at it, make sense of it, and, and take control of it, right? That's what the Net Worth Nation community is all about. So with these questions here, um, I'm going to ask the golden rule that we all are supposed to know. What is the golden rule of investing? Net worth nation. That is correct. Never gamble with money that you cannot afford to lose. That's the golden rule. The golden rule is never gamble with money that you can afford to lose. Now, why am I saying it in this way? Because we may have heard things a little bit differently when it came to our uh, retirement and our savings. But I'm going to set the record straight. We are not in the position to lose money. That is the first rule. We are not in a position to lose money. The second rule is that we are not in a position to ever lose money. We are not in a position to ever lose money. And the third rule is the number one and the number two rule reinforced. So what are we saying? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what we're saying. We're not in this business to lose. And so I know, um, you know, you're hearing a lot of things and there's a lot of buzz going around, you know, about different toys to play with and different things to invest money in. And yes, there is. There is a lot of toys out there to play with. But if you stay on track and recognize that you're never going to play around, gamble, or risk income, money, savings, or whatever that you can't afford to lose, then you will be in the right position in the right place. Which brings me to my next point. So why in the hell do we buy these toys and investment uh, uh, tools that do just the opposite of what we have on the previous slide. Why? Is it because that's what we should be doing? Is that because what we've been told to be doing? So what exactly am I talking about here when I'm saying, why do we buy? Why do we buy what? Well, let's talk about it. So we all brought up 
I would say some early, some in the middle of the road and some late, we're talking about S&P 500 products. Um, let's face it, this is where we were told the riches were. This is where we understood that money was being grown by epic proportions and so on and so forth. And the reality of it is, is that to the most part, there is a lot of truth to this. Have people made uh, plenty of money in this S&P 500 over the decades? Yeah. Yeah, they have. Have people lost a boatload of money in the S&P 500 over the decades? And the answer is yes, they have. So what's my point? My point is back to the previous slides. Never gamble or play with money that you cannot afford to lose. So the question of the day is, are the people who did not do as well as they would like in the S&P 500 over the past several decades, were they people that were investing their liquid, investing their surplus, or were they people that were investing on a necessity and an absolute basis? Stock markets, mutual funds, varial index products with no caps or no floors. These are the types of S&P 500 that have made such a name for themselves over the last 30 to 40 years that pretty much everybody has dibbled in it at one form, time, or another. The question I'm asking is, are these tools the types of tools that someone who has to be very, very strategic and very careful with what they lose, are these the types of tools that those people play with? And I'm going to say I don't really think that's accurate. Now, I know I can get into some trouble here, but I'm already out the building. So what the heck? I have nothing at this point to lose other than a few followers. But the reality of it is, is this. These tools were not designed for the average Joes to play with. I'm going to say that one more time. These tools were not designed for the average Joes to play with. In other words, when uh, you know you calculate and you say, I'm going to take you know this income here and I'm going to do my best to plant this in the ground, these seeds, and I'm going to do my best to grow uh, avocado trees or I'm going to do my best to grow coconut trees or well, let's go up north, apple trees, right? And the goal is, is that when you plant those seeds, rest assured, you can almost pretty much count your set your clock to it, that what's going to grow out of that ground is going to be an apple tree. Now, there are some cases where there could be some bad, you know, in there and some bad crop and maybe, you know, a couple trees don't produce themselves. But for the most part, you can set your clock to it that the apple tree is going to grow. In this situation, um, and you can see from the lines going up and down, up and down, doesn't quite come off that way. So that's one of, what's one aspect. Now let's talk about some other things that are a little bit more maybe familiar. Recognize some of these guys. Now pull these average, um, I'll call them average. These are multi-billion dollar banks, but the average banks that most of us are familiar with, Bank of America, Citibank, and Wells Fargo. And so the next thing that we've done, and this kind of goes back a step, right? Because now that S&P is kind of like what's going on, that's kind of new. But this was the, the, the model that most people, you know, were, were privy to. And uh, as you can see, you know, I got your savings uh, and your CDs. Um, and most people utilize these guys. Um, and some people still do for the most part, right? As a place to park money. But I have some questions. And the questions that I have with these guys is that you they're parking and allowing you to park your money. And in some cases, they're giving you anywhere from 0 0.1, 0 0.4. And in some other cases, they're giving you 4.89. 5%, 4.5. So you kind of get the gist of what these top lines are telling you. But the thing that I found very, very disturbing 
is what's going on on the bottom of the screen. Yeah. You know, credit card loans, home loans, auto loans, you know, unsecured credit card, home loans, unsecured. Why am I showing you this? Why? Just because? No, <laughs> I'm showing you this because somebody's not playing fair in the sandbox. Somebody's not playing fair in the sandbox. So like I said on the previous slide, those S&P products look like they were more designed for, you know, different type of people. These products look like they also are designed for a different type of people because it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that what's coming in to these organizations is not what they're willing to share. I mean, let's face it. You're giving me 0.12% on a savings account when you're pocketing 11.49 to 19% on products that I don't have any cut on. I'm not even getting a fair cut on any of these products. I mean, these banks are making a boatload of money. And I don't, what do I have to show for this? Right? I mean, look at these percentages. They're sickening. They're sickening, Net Worth Nation. Let's keep it 100. They're sickening. And we're all guilty of it, me, myself included, and I. I I've, I've played with these products for, for decades, for decades. You know, and, and, I, and I've taken it right on the, right here, right on the jaw taking it right on the jaw with these products. You know, I knew, you know, I saw these numbers, but, you know, they just didn't sink in for whatever reason, because I guess that's just the natural thing to do, right? So I'm not going to beat a dead horse, but I think you guys kind of see that, you know, it's not just those three elephants. There's, there's a lot more elephants in the room that we want to admit to, and banks are a major part of them as well, just like the S&P 500. Which brings me to my next point. So what are some of the toys that maybe people like us should play with that really cannot afford to lose, but have the same kind of feeling as that is? And yeah, I'm going to keep talking about the A word here, right, a little bit. And, and just what are annuities and what annuities bring to the table in comparison to some of these other guys we shared on previous slides is that, yeah, we're going to have a little fun with the S&P 500. You know, I, I, I'm not going to say we're not because a lot of these products are influenced by the S&P 500. So we're going to have a little fun with them. We're going to play a little bit. But again, we're not controlled by them in the sense because with this particular product, as you can clearly see, that it doesn't necessarily pay out the way an S&P 500 product does because it's capped high, but it's also protected floor low, meaning that, you know, it won't go below the lines here. You know, um, you can see from, you know, annuities, how they were able to steady up and hold their position. And people say, well, what's so big about that? You have a lot of financial advisors laughing at these products saying, ha, 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 ha. Oh, those people that promote annuities, they... They just don't understand the way the market works. You're supposed to stay in that market and you ride that market out and you play with that market and you come out of that market and you just pull your money out of that market, you know, when you're ready to retire and you just live out the rest of your days. And I'm going to laugh back, as they say on the streets, I'm clapping back like that is asinine information, because the reality of it is I don't know when you're going to retire when you're going to retire, when you're going to retire, when you're going to retire, when you're going to retire. I don't know what year you're coming out of the system. I don't know that. But whatever year you come out of the system, you got to hope and pray that whatever you put in there, you're at least going to get that back. The S&P 500 cannot tell you that you're going to get all the money back that you put in there. It's just not going to be able to do that because it doesn't know when your number is going to be called. It just doesn't. You know, all of us have different numbers. So when you come out of the game, the workforce game, as we say, when is that going to be? For those that were coming out around the late 90s and early 2000s, hey, it, it was what it was. I mean, I know a bunch of them that couldn't even retire. They were working back, 
you know, as contractors back in the bell days because the market was just so bad. 08, same thing. So don't tell somebody uh, a product that's not, uh, that's very unpredictable to when you're going to retire, which let's make no mistake. If you saw the, uh, the income, uh, uh, the retirement gamble that I put out a few weeks ago, we talked about that. That is a gamble because we don't know when exactly the retirement is going to come. We, ge we generally know and we hope and pray that the market is behaving themselves during that timeline or that we stick around long enough for the rebound. All right. So um, I'm going to get off of this topic, but I just want to get you to understand fixed annuities uh, does a combination of things. There's safety in the principle. There is some growth opportunities. Now, just because it's not completely S&P 500, it does grow now. It may not grow as much, but it does grow to the point of significance, significance. It's a significant growth because when people are going down and jumping ship in the S&P, this is one product where you literally can tell your client, stand down, stand down and ride it out because you're not losing right money that you've put into it. A lot of people make a point, oh, well, you got to keep putting into these annuities and these IULs, because if you stop putting into it, you know, they'll die. But here's the thing. You're not stop putting in the 401k either. You're still putting it in. It's going in there every two weeks or every week or every month when you get paid. What's the difference? So it's no difference. That 401k will sit there and, and not do anything if you don't really do anything with it. So you have to do something with all of your products. You know, it's just how you look at it. Right. And again, lifetime income. Legacy protection. These products go to the, to the generation behind you. I'm not saying that 401ks and S&P 500s won't go to the generation behind, but you got to take an account and hope and pray that whatever was put in there by the original owner is still there. What's the next point? Next point is the index universal insurance products. This is another product that I pretty much promote very similarly to the annuities. Obviously, you know, if your health is relatively uh, fair, these are products that you can get as well. Annuities are not so much relying on health index. Yeah. OK, it is. It is relying a little bit on health. But here's the thing. We talk about the maze and the, and the craze of the S&P 500. I think you can clearly see. Uh, matter of fact, this one probably does a little bit more justice in understanding the diving and the rising. So as you see the caps on the um, um, uh, annuities and the caps on the IULs can only go but so far because of the reality that, um, you know, they can't uh, necessarily um, go below market value. But the point I want to make you clear on is that your money that you're putting in there is going to be there. Also, what you have to recognize in an IUL is it's also worth the value of the policy you wrote it on. What do I mean by that? You can't forget that if you wrote a $200,000 IUL or $400,000 or half a million or $1.5 or $2 million policy, $3 million policy, you forgot that three, four, five million million or whatever, $2 million or $500,000, don't forget that that money is also still there. As a matter of fact, that money is probably more realistically there than even the cash value. The cash value could fluctuate. The dividends might fluctuate, but that death benefit won't fluctuate. I tell you that much. So the value of the product in, the, in an IUL is going to be a whole lot stronger than any S&P 500 and any financial advisor uh, that tells you anything different, they, they absolutely got it wrong. So let's take away these takeaways. Key index, universal life, uh, a great upside potential, a lot of flexibility, and a lot of tax-free gains. These are the three things that address those elephants from my previous presentation. What exactly are we talking about here? Well, let's peel back. What do we mean? Flexibility. You can't just go in a 401k and take money out of there at will. You cannot do that. You have to answer a series of questions and you're only allowed to a certain percentage, period, in the discussion. With your stocks, yeah, you can 
play with those stocks, sell them, trade them, sell them, trade them, you know, go back and forth. I know a couple of guys in my old job, they used to do that very well. Um, and, and that's good. You can do that. Okay. Um, tax free gains. Mm, a lot of you toys out there can't do that. Banking tool, banking products, uh, they're not tax free. They're not strategically uh, set up um, under tax free protections because those are financial products that have to pay capital gains, taxes, and all types of other taxes that come into play. So let's make no mistake. I don't have to be a tax expert to understand that there are certain tools out there and certain products out there that are protected from taxes because they are, they are not like uh, other products. Again, this type of insurance yeah, somebody might say, well, as long as you pay the, pre pay the premiums, well, that's pretty much with any tool. If you don't put no money in it, you ain't getting nothing out of it. But the reality of it is you ain't got to worry about losing what's in there. Because guess what? These insurance products can be strategically set up to only be paid for what? A specific period of time. And that's where I come in. <laughs> you know, you let me know, hey, I only want to pay in this product for 20 years. And after that, I don't want to pay no more. When all my buddies come out of work, I'm coming out with them, and I want to have this juicy toy right here to collect on for the rest of my life. That's where I come in, okay? Uh, some of the drawbacks uh, could be some limits on your annual returns because it's not going to jump out the window like the stock market. Uh, but at the same time, what you got, you got. What's in there is in there. And what's sheltered from taxes is sheltered from taxes, Okay. Um, so those are the things that we just want to make it clear. It's not something to put fear. It's just looking at the reality that we said when we started this presentation. Can I afford to lose the money that I have invested? Most of you guys on this channel that I know personally is going to answer that question. Heck no. <laughs> okay. We can't afford to lose a dime. And because I know that, this is why I'm speaking to these particular products, because none of us can really afford it. And so bringing closure to this, I want to make sure that we really understand why it's very important to stay in the loop when it comes to the most important investments of all, and that's yourselves. Once again, Ranji, the Network Nation, your console. Thanks for seeing you. Appreciate you. Talk soon. Thank you.